And we are live. Welcome back, everybody. This is just another Q&A of questions I have compiled from Reddit. Again, there's just thousands of questions there, and I'm just doing my part in helping to answer some of them here on this YouTube live stream. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat, and I'll get to them. But let us get started. First question. I've never measured myself when I started working out. I am now four months in, dropped 22 pounds, put on muscle, congrats to you. What measurements should I take? Even though the scale shows I lost weight, I still see myself as fat. Hmm. Well, first, first off, you have to recognize and congratulate yourself that you are making progress and you are dropping weight. So you're, your image of yourself, how you view yourself, that needs to also be worked on. I know you're working on the physical, but this is also a mental change that you are that you should also take part in and that you should also progress in as well. As for the physical measurements, you're already keeping track of body weight. That's important. I think another uh, key ele element that you should measure is hip to waist ratio. So take a tape measure measure the smallest part of your waist and the widest part of your hips and then take the ratio of that and for men and women there is a small range that is considered average or healthy and you should begin to work yourself towards that and just that along with measuring your body weight you should be on the right track to uh, hitting your weight loss goal All right, I reached the max weight of standing calf, calf raise machine, 400 pounds. How should I go about increasing the weight on this? You can change the stability. You can change the amount of legs you're using. So you can use one leg. You can, there's just a ton. You, if you are, and you can hold weight as well. You can slow down the tempo. There's all these different factors you can do to have more stress, even though there's not more weight on the calf raise machine. So I just listed a couple examples there and that should keep you busy. I've reached the max weight of hip abduction and hip adduction machine 260. How can we go about increasing the weight for this? Same. Same thing as before, but since you're sitting, changing the tempo, having someone there to apply more resistance, um, making sure that at the end range, you're holding it longer for a squeeze, or you can take away the machine and do something uh, with free weight with more degrees of freedom so that you also incorporate stability along with working with hip abduction and hip abduction. Next question. What are some additional exercises for my hamstring? Feel they are lagging a bit on, compared to other leg muscles. Current leg day is leg press, V squats, leg extensions, leg curls, hip adduction, hip abduction, and standing calf raise. You can do I noticed that you don't have any deadlifts in there, so that's one thing, and any of the variations. But if you do choose a trap bar deadlift, that might work more quads. Um, good mornings. You can do good mornings. You can do Nordic hamstrings um, with any of the progressions. That would work very well. And even if you can't, you don't want to do any of those, you can do a lot of the exercises that involve body weight, so like bridging, um, that type of stuff, Jefferson curls. So just a lot of stuff you can work on and you can just take one or even two and just include it and see how you feel and then work your way into seeing what feels the best for you and what gives you the most result. 
I've always wanted to include ATG squats in my routine, but when I reach the bottom and go up, there's a stinging pain in my left calf. Even without weights, there's it's still the same. I've tried foam rolling, or cross balling, and even icing it before squats. This barely helps. The problem still persists after all of that. Uh, extra info is that I started having this calf pain when I got heavier. It was worse over time. 20 kg in a span of three years. Any idea of how to fix this? Sounds like you need to visit a professional because this could be a structural issue, but it sounds like you just developed it. So it could be some, so it could be a positional fault of one of your leg muscles, probably maybe, maybe your fibula, but yeah, structural exam, a muscle test needs to be done. So definitely visit a physio to get yourself evaluated. And if it's causing you pain, why continue? But you should give your physio a good thorough explanation of what aggravates it and what doesn't because that will definitely help narrow down the possibilities of making a wrong assumption. Next question, is three by five adequate for strength work on the squat with an RP of nine? Three by five with RP nine, that's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, for a beginner, you, you can probably get away with it because your RP nine, RP nine will be improving every session. Uh, me, nine, almost 10 years into the game, Three by five or RP nine. Yeah, I could do it in one session, maybe two, but by the third, I just wanna, I just wanna quit. And I find that longevity, just not being burnt out, having motivation to train, just moving weight quickly, keeping my rest periods between two to four minutes, that has really helped me improve my work capacity. It helps my confidence level and. I know in the long run, each successful workout is building a new layer of maximal strength in the end goal. So that's what's been working for me. And to answer this question, is it adequate? You can probably get away with RPE 7 or 8. But for RPE 9, it just depends on what stage of the program you want, experience level, how you like to train. Because there are some people, if they only squat once a week, yeah, you can probably get away with 3x5 RP9 versus someone who squats maybe two or three times a week. Yeah, RP9 twice or three times a week while having other goals in the compound list because I am confident that if you are including squats and you're using RP scales and using this 3x5 framework that you're also benching, you're probably deadlifting, you probably have other upper body or lower body accessory movements. So it's going to be tough for you to maintain that this progress uh, this workload and just adding all these exercises into your program all right next question i have a workout program that will say for example three sets of eight for an exercise i can do the first set fine no problem but then the subsequent sets my rep count will drop Let's say five or even lower. How do I compensate for this? Lower the weight every set within the rep range. Just do less reps. It's a proper workout routine with all the reps and sets laid out. So I'm worried that I'm losing volume sets throughout the week. So yes, because in this scenario that you provided, you are losing volume. But at the same time, you got to look at the reality. You're not able to complete all your sets and reps. So something to say about that regard. So yeah, there's just two suggestions I have that will help you to further progress yourself. Either drop the weight so that you can keep three sets of eight and of that exercise, and then you can continue to progress forward like that. Or you can keep the weight, the, you can keep the weight for the first set, but yes, like you said before, drop the weight so that you can get eight reps for the second set and just work your way like that actually there might be a third way as well because you can also keep the weight the same only do eight reps and then let's say you did five five for the next one and then next week you'll do eight five or six just trying to improve on last week 
But if you find that this is not working out for you, you might want to try the other routes where you just decrease the weight entirely, keeping it three sets of eight, or you just try to get eight reps, but find the appropriate weight for how you're feeling or how you can express your strength that day. Okay. What's everyone's go-to exercise for glutes and hamstrings? Deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, sumo deadlifts for me, Nordics. I currently bought a reverse hyper machine and I found it very helpful, but you can do bridges. You can do any of the bridge progressions. So single leg bridges, uh, increasing or decreasing stability of the bridge. So you're standing on a ball, you're, you're standing on pads, clamshells, uh, standing, standing hip, hip four way. Uh, there's a ton of exercises, but for me, good mornings as well. Yeah. So for me, I like the main competent main deadlift movements, sumo or conventional, uh, reverse hypers, and then good mornings as well. I would put higher up, and then if I need to, I'll supplement it with Romanians bridges, any of the other small, the ones that require less mental effort. Of course, I could go heavy and force myself to focus harder on those movements, but because of the way we measure and express our strength in the barbell movements, that's where I put more, more of my focus. Okay, oh, and there's more to that question. You feel that your leg days don't include, don't target those muscles as much as you like. You consist of squats, Romanian deadlifts, free bar hip thrusts, and sissy squats. Oh, oh yeah, squats definitely work on your glutes. Mm -hmm. For try front squats, try uh, heel elevated squats too. Uh, you did sissy squats, okay. You did hip thrusts, all right. Usually hip thrust is one of those exercises that definitely targets the glute max a lot because you are forcibly going into hip extension and holding it at the top. And the only way to move in that range of motion when you are trying to thrust the bar upward to get your body in as straight as possible is hip extension, which is working on your glutes and hamstrings. So I'm surprised you don't feel it as much. Maybe you need to lower the weight or maybe you just need to change up the tempo because that's one of the go-tos uh, for a higher level glute and hamstring exercise. I would, I would just do some checking up on that because that exercise should be one of the uh, one of the higher ones to work on those two muscle groups. Next question. So part of my powerlifting routine in the wiki is leg extensions. I don't want my legs to be massive, but I'm currently doing 145 on each side and the instruction says to progress 2.5 each week. My legs are well proportioned and to have a lean, muscular defined male physique body type. Same with all areas of my body. How do I know when to stop adding weight, go down, or do I go down and do more reps? If you're worried about your legs just getting so big that you can't control the gains, don't worry. Just don't worry. Nine, ten years into the game, I probably gained 10 to 20 pounds. I have been fluctuating in weight uh, towards the seven to nine year mark to the present day. Your leg, your legs won't grow as fast as you think they would unless you are eating like you want to gain weight. So, and you sound, and by the way you phrase this question, it sounds to me that your your diet is well controlled, and it just making progress like that in the way that you are projecting is not realistic. It will one hundred percent not happen. So. Have no fear and just continue training. What part of the legs ass is gets neglected by the squat and deadlift? And what exercises can I do to train these missing pieces? The rotation parts of the hip. Hip. So internal, external rotation. 
Uh, you can, there's also hip a deduction and a deduction because really you're, you're just doing a lot of hip flexion, hip extension. So you got the quads and the hamstrings down. You're doing a lot of knee flexion and knee extension that gets done. But really everything else uh, is not targeted. So all the ankle movements, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, eversion. Um, if you find that those are weak, you should definitely include resistant bands to work on those uh, small ranges of motion. Those muscles are tiny. So the fact that they don't get targeted in the squat and deadlift because you're not even moving your ankle, you, your ankle needs to be locked and supported so that you can move the big weights and the bigger muscle groups. So that's it for the ankle. Your calves are not working as well because you're not doing any plantar flexion. You're not going on your tippy toes. So you get astrox, your soleus. And the only way to do that is to do calf raises uh, with a straight knee and then do them with a bent knee. Uh, the road read components. So internal rotation, external rotation of, of the leg. You can do that with bridges. You can do that with manual resistance. You can do that with free weight against gravity. And hip A deduction and A deduction. Yep. You can work that with the bands. Try to do that uh, against resistance. Have it do it against gravity. Do it against the against a mat. Do it for isometrics. So all of those parts. Those are definitely the smaller muscle groups. And how important are they? They're important enough so that you have enough stability and support to do the heavy lifts because yes you can get injured and pull one of those one of these muscles and because your your leg is not strong enough uh, to support the heavy weight that you can't uh, perform the squat and deadlift properly because there's a small nuance that is limiting you and i've never read or i've never seen that someone missed the squat because their calves are too small or like they don't have enough calf strength but on the flip side, having weak calves will, and saying that you have weak calves will definitely not help you get a bigger squat, if, you, if, you, if that makes any sense. So like if you have weaknesses in your kinetic chain, that's only going to limit you. But if you get everything nice and strong and have it maintained, that is less, than, less of an issue for you and you can focus on higher priority things whether it is form it form related motor control uh neuromuscular uh the way that you control the, the weight mind body connection or if it's actually a uh, muscular weakness so and usually as you focus on the squat and deadlift you hope that it is one of one of some one of the factors that you can control so you hope that it's form related or um, some kind of muscular weakness rather than, okay, now you have to scan the entire kinetic chain, see if everything is functioning and just well-oiled so that you can handle whatever amount of weeks that you're scheduled to programming, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And it just sucks that if midway or just any time into a scheduled programming block that you are you find yourself missing something you something's just not quite right and you have to reevaluate it, it's hard because if it's not oh if you can't identify quickly based off your own personal experience it's just kind of tough because you just don't have the reference to make that judgment call and then you either need someone with more experience someone who's dealt with it dealt with a similar issue like you built similarly and you can get out of the rut yourself but other than that those are the types of body parts, the uh, leg motions, hip motions, knee motions, ankle motions that are missing when you perform these compound movements because they they just don't target those muscles. You just move for squats, sit, go down into a squat, come back up. And for deadlift, you just stand up. And 
really the motions for those two exercises are quite simple, but a lot goes into it in terms of stability. And then after stability, the strength expression after that. All right. So that's it for the questions. Let me know if you have any more. You can leave them down in the comments below, and I'll check in with you guys next time.